Well, former federal prosecutor and CNN legal analyst Shan Wu with us now, as well as Kevin Robillard, senior political reporter for HuffPost. Gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. So I want to ask first about uh, Congressman Van Drew. Kevin, um, we know that the timing of the announcement is something that we're obviously watching. Uh, this is an anti-impeachment Democrat who has voted along Democratic lines, uh, really for most of his term thus far. But what do you make of his motivation here? Is mm -hmm. this a, a true show of support for the president, or is this a man who is just trying to hold on to his job? It appears to be mostly the latter. Um, at this point, you know, he was clearly losing the support of Democrats back in his home district. A group of candidates he backed uh, sort of at the state legislative election, state legislative level in this fall's elections did really poorly. There is public polling showing that, or uh, excuse me, some internal polling that Democrats have leaked out, showing that only 22% of the Democrats in his district wanted him to be the party's nominee again. So he's fairly clearly losing support. And while he's voted with Democratic leadership on most major bills this Congress, he is already sort of a more conservative Democrat, always was. Uh, he, for instance, he's a gun rights supporter, has a 100% rating from the NRA. So this was already a one of the most conservative Democrats in the House of Representatives. And now it sort of makes a certain amount of sense that he's going to be switching parties. Shan, what do you make of the timing of all of it, before or after the impeachment vote? Uh, well, from a strategic point of view, I think uh, they like the idea of him not switching parties before the vote. So I think he should switch after it to get the most bang for the buck for the Republicans, because that makes it look like they can spin it as he's a Democrat with conscience as opposed to a Democrat who's mm -hmm. really cynically worried about losing his seat. <laughs> mm. I, I want to listen with you here to something that uh, Senator Lindsey Graham said to CNN's Becky Anderson yesterday um, about what he plans to do going into this uh, impeachment as it's expected to make it to the Senate. I am trying to give a pretty clear signal. I have made up my mind. <laughs> uh, I'm not I trying wasn't to in pretend any doubt to be a point. fair <laughs> juror here. He said there, I'm not trying to pretend to be a fair juror here. Put that together with uh, the oath that senators will take going into um, a, a Senate trial. They will say, I solemnly swear or affirm, as the case may be, that in all things appertaining to the trial of the impeachment of Donald Trump now pending, I will do impartial justice according to the Constitution and laws, so help me God. Shan, put those two together, those two things together, <laughs> contrast it for us. Well, if I were uh, advising the senator, I would focus on the word justice there, and the word justice is going to be open to some interpretation. Uh, he's not promising or taking an oath to be an impartial juror, the way he'd have to in a court proceeding. And I think he's quite well aware of the difference that this is a legal proceeding, but it takes place in the Senate in the political forum. And I think he's very well aware of that. Uh, and he likes to pick and choose which courtroom type rules he'd like to use. They'll talk about hearsay, they'll talk about statutory elements that will apply in a courtroom. Uh, obviously quite hypocritical just to cherry pick what's convenient to them and what's not convenient to them. <laughs> Obviously, there is so much division when it comes to this this whole situation, and I want to listen uh, with both of you to what happened to Representative Tom Malinowski, uh, a Democrat of New Jersey, yesterday when he was at a town hall, just to get a sense of what they are up against in their own districts. Based on the evidence that I have seen in the depositions, in the hearings, in the documents I have seen, I believe that on the two counts of impeachment that have been put before us, that the vote should be yes, and I will be voting yes. Kevin, you hear the cheers, you hear the boos uh, mm -hmm. from people that are there to listen to him. Help us understand what these lawmakers are up against, that what line they are being really forced to take here, as they should, because they're representing their districts. Yeah, it is, it is a tough vote for some of these people. Um, you've heard some moderate Democrats say they might sort of split the baby, so to speak, and vote yes on one article of impeachment and no on another. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how many choose to go that route. Um, but I w it's also important to say, as much as these, these uh, impeachment town halls are getting very emotional, you haven't really seen in sort of the broader public polling that's available any indication that impeachment is really yet endangering 
some of these moderate Democrats. Trump's campaign manager, Brad Parscale, tweeted out a few weeks ago some polling they had done in the districts of one of the most vulnerable House Democrats, uh, Congresswoman Kendra Horn. And even that didn't really make the case that her impeachment vote was what was going to somehow sink her when she was running for re-election in 2020. So it's tough to see. This might be a tough vote for them, but it's hard to necessarily say that it might cost any of these people their seats, uh, sort of, in 2020. Gotcha. So Senator Angus King, who is an independent, uh, tweeted this. He said, the American people need to see impartial justice. History will record that this is not only a trial in the Senate, it's a trial of the Senate. Shan, at the end of the day, when this is over, what do you prognosticate the state of this union of the U.S. will be? Uh, I think the state of the union will still be strong. Uh, this is really a continuation of a great divide and partisanship that's been going on for quite some time that really swept Trump into office or allowed him to squeak into office. Uh, it's just more of the same. I think what's really important here for the Democrats to think about is the jury is not really the Senate. I mean, that's a pretty foregone conclusion that they're not going to remove the president. The jury here really is the American people when they go to the election polls. And to do that, I think it's really important that they paint a broad picture of the misconduct. I wish they had gone broad rather than narrow with the articles of impeachment, but because it's not a court trial, they are not hemmed in by a lot of the rules of evidence or no character evidence like in a civil or criminal trial. Mm -hmm. They can put in a lot of the other misconduct and really show the American people that these offenses are offenses against our Constitution, and that's important to get out there. Kevin Robillard, Shan Wu, always grateful to have you both with us. Thank you, gentlemen. Good to see you.